All right guys, the world is becoming a crazy, crazy place. You guys know me, I live in the USA. I love living here. I built multiple businesses here. I personally feel very, very blessed to live in America. I know a lot of you guys like me are not happy with the way things are being run right now. The border's going crazy. Prices and inflation are through the roof. I hear this stuff from all the time when I meet you guys in person. That's why guys, I am pumped up with sendthevote.com. Sendthevote.com is a pro-America, pro-freedom organization that's gonna make sure you're registered to vote and your vote is gonna count. This is not about being Republican or Democrat. This is a nonpartisan organization. This is just gonna make sure that everybody's vote is counted and nobody is left on the sidelines. You can go to the website and it's gonna tell you everything you need to get registered. Send it to everybody. We need to make sure that everybody pro-America is registered to vote. If you guys are not registered to vote or you don't know how to do it, go to sendthevote.com right here. Really, really easy, really, really simple. I'm telling you guys, this is our last chance to make a difference and you guys have a voice, believe it or not. I know you're one person, but you gotta encourage everybody around you. That's why we're doing this. Sendthevote.com. Let's do this, boys. This is our last chance. All right, boys, we have a massive, massive episode. We have the future vice president of the United States, JD Vance on the podcast. Before we get into it, if you guys do not know about the Prize Picks app, you gotta try it out. You guys know me, I have fired on every single app when it comes to sports, and by far, Prize Picks is my favorite. What I love about Prize Picks is instead of choosing teams, you're choosing individual players. So, each player has a set projection and you either get to go more or less than that set projection. So if you're really smart with sports and you know what players are gonna perform on what nights, this is a no brainer for you guys. You guys are gonna tear up the Prize Picks app. Download it, give it a try. I know there's no NBA, there's no NFL right now. It's coming back soon, but don't be that that stops firing on sports during the summer as well, all right? The Olympics is on, fire on some archery or some like that. We got baseball. UFC's on, golf. If you guys are a first time user, we got you guys on code NELK right here. So with code NELK, if you put in five bucks, just $5 with code NELK, you're instantly gonna get a free 50 bucks. So download the Prize Specs app, plug in code NELK, put in five bucks and you're gonna get $50. No strings attached, that's pretty much a free 50 bucks, guys. So I don't know why you wouldn't do that. Turn that 50 into God knows what if you get on a heater. So download the Prize Picks app, use code NELK, Massive, massive podcast. We are back every single week. Took a little break, but we're coming back hot. Let's get into it. You know it's a big pod when we get out of uh, the f- sheet, right? Yeah, the sheet. That's how you know it's a big I pod. I like the sheet. You guys excited? How crazy oh, is this? I'm hyped for this very one. Very crazy. I'm hyped for this one. Very, very. You told me, and I was like, damn, I can't miss that. You can't miss that one, can't right? Can't miss it. I'm on the flight. I, I mean, you- yeah, it's been, it's been a minute since we've done an episode. So we took in a little bit of a break, but. Last one was Will Smith. Last one was Will Smith. So we ended off with a bang, and then when we take a little break, you always got to come back with a bang. So Yeah, yeah. This is fire. It's J.D. Vance, probably the, the future president, vice president of the United States. It's pretty f- crazy. I don't think, and he hasn't done, he hasn't really done money, much interviews. Definitely no any. podcasts. Yeah, I haven't seen him on any podcasts. No podcasts. I've just seen him on like interviews on like mainstream media. Which That's is it. pretty crazy that. He's coming to full sit down on, on the Full Sun Podcast. I don't know who sets these up, but goddamn, they're doing a good job. Shout out John Shahidi. <laughs> Fresh cut. Looks great. You look great right now. Yo, Brad, I have action. Do you think you could just thank John for setting this up? <laughs> John, thank you for setting this up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> oh. I just won 500 bucks. Let's go, baby. Well, you can't. I don't think you could force me to do that. <laughs> no, it's all good. There was no rules. I, don't, I didn't. I wasn't sure who did it. I'm not. What the fuck? I don't it was know. a collective effort between me and John. Stiney's not that excited for this one, though. Yeah, he's like, showed up and do some plain white tea. Like, world. It looks Stiney, like Stanley only gets excited for like content that like he knows the chicks are gonna like. Yeah, or he gets. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's so true. Like he just thinks like, all right, clips, TikTok, girls are on TikTok. <laughs> Dude, I'm that's gonna get so more pussy. accurate. That is not accurate, bro. It's super that's accurate. So accurate, bro. You know it. Your so, content is based around girls. It's fine. I'm not mad. That. No, nothing. I'm just. That's it's, why if like Full Send Golf gets like a million views. Like, he's like, uh, I don't really want to do that because, like, it's just all guys watching <laughs> it. <laughs> did you ever, did you ever take, you taking any of those girls, like, for real from The Bachelor or what? Yeah, I did. I, I'm going through it with one right now. It's a touchy subject. The one that won. Really? Yeah, she cut me off. 
I wonder why. Why do you think? Your commitment issues, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Trust me. Shit. Yeah, I get that. So. You big watch guy now? That's what you do. Huh? You're a watch guy now? Is that a new piece? Yeah. She cut me off. I woke up, drove straight to timepiece, and bought this. <laughs> I swear <laughs> to God. Not to sound like a douche, but I needed some temporary happiness. It makes sense why your content's that way, too. It's related yeah. to the girls. So what's new with you? Anything? Oh, no, a lot. No, no spiritual bullshit? Like, just what's actually going on with you? No spiritual bullshit? What's yeah. actually going on with me? Yeah. Um, I'm Right now, I'm focused on the gym in Miami. So that's my main focus. When's that? It's probably going to be early next year. Yeah. Nice. With the first few months. That's it's close to where you guys are actually living. Yeah. So it's going to be fun, man. That's sick. Are you, are you going to move out there at all? I'll be 50-50. Yeah, me for too. Taxes. Did you ever fight Bob? Did I fight Bob? They got yeah. in a huge argument together. Again? They, they Dude, fix full, it. yeah, full swing. Yeah. You just always get. In, is it just a thing? Well, no, he brought. Well, he brought someone that. I mean, the girl, right? She's uh, so good at fuck. golf. Well, dude, we were supposed to get Steiny to play, and that was gonna be like kind of our, I don't know, like plan or whatever. But she just totally like wiped us out in the full swing golf video. It'll come out soon, but I got really heated off that. Plus, I, I gotta come the, do that that video with you. Yeah, you should. Down. Body bodybuilder yeah. plays golf. <laughs> I'm not good at golf. It's a boring not game. Good. It's a boring game. I don't have the patience for it. Hmm. Do you want to do a you want to do a thank you to the fans? I did one before the pod starts. Yeah. For what? I have. Did you not see the last one I did? No, I know. I saw it in your video. That was a yeah. That was very. That was from the heart. I'm I not know. gonna do it when it's not <laughs> meaningful. Wait. What, what? What? Thank you for which part? I did a pod the day that uh, the assassination attempt happened. So I just said a huge thank you to Kyle, Full Sand, Dana White. What did that have to do with the assassination? That was Dana White, too. No, just like the fact that it's <laughs> insane that I have a relationship somewhat with him. Yeah, I see. I see. And how grateful I am to be where I'm at. And not a day goes by where I for, forget what these guys have done for me. Yeah. Crazy to think. Two years ago, I was living in my sister's shack. Yeah. Now he's $25,000 a month in Hollywood. For, uh, yeah, I know uh, that expires soon. Then, yeah, we're, then we're then we're back to the. Uh, that was not a good then idea. Then we're back to the two bad two bedroom Why'd you in Venice. That? <laughs> just f it. If you see them out. No, no, it's it's nice. Women coming in on, out of that place. I believe it. I believe it. But still, like, why not just buy? Dude, sometimes house? you gotta just have five thousand dollars. It's crazy. Yo, if you do this shit and you're making money and you're having fun and you're not spending it and having f fun with it, it's not worth it. I, I agree. Like, I'm not like you. You know I agree, I mean? but like twenty five thousand dollars is like, why not just get it was a mortgage? Only twenty, twenty, whatever. Get bought. Our that's like a five thousand five. Excuse me, that's like a five million dollar house mortgage. Four. So four what's five. eight on Zillow? I'm just saying. <laughs> just you know, <laughs> right? Make you buy that? You buy your? No. You got to buy something. Why are you not buying something? I don't. I just. I'm just talking about just for real estate. I just rather have that cash, like more liquid. Yeah, but. If you own a property, it's like I have. I have. You could take money for. There's no, so many benefits to that. I have 85 percent of what I have. You in don't own the a stock home. market. You no. you own a home and you bought a home in Canada, though, mm -hmm. huh? bro. You need to buy a home. But like, what's the difference between like having my like X amount of money in a house or like treasury bonds? I mean, you can pull directly from like the if house I value. If I want to pull out, because sometimes I like need like if I want to start something. Yeah, I get it. Or like even like bachelor video, like you could pull it out of the the the. The, Way faster than liquidating like a house. Not even liquidating. I think you pull out the value from the house. You can take like a loan against the value of the house. Yeah, but I I just kind of move a little quicker. Some I, I need to move a little quicker sometimes in that. I get it. Who am I? Who am I? Yo, I have it. I have it. No, I got him. Dude, that was. I I got a lot of messages about that scene. People like that. You're acting. They loved it. Dead. I'm oh, dead yeah, serious. Yeah, yeah. I'm dead serious. I got a ton of. A I know everyone was saying people, Brad was a great actor. A ton of people messaged me about that. You play, like, you play a good uh, agent. I could do it. What's up, guys? What's up? Say hello. Welcome. Hey, How's it going? Hey, yeah. hey John. Hey, good to see you, man. Hello. hello. What's up, Let's guys? Go. What's up, man? How are you? Please. Brad, look at me. How are you? Yeah, how are you? Good. <laughs> so, are you guys in Vegas, or is this just a. Sorry. Based in Miami. You're based in Miami. So, you just came up here for this? What do you mean? Of course. <laughs> we're yeah, doing you, course. and then we're doing also Dana White. Oh, nice. As well. Okay. We're going to catch okay. up with him. All right. That's exciting. But, dude, we really appreciate you coming through. Yeah. It's good Future to be here. Thank Vice you. Vice President of the United States. <laughs> we got to win first, but thank you. Got to win. Yeah. How, do, how does this all, like, feel to you? Oh, man. It's so, it's so wild. So the biggest difference from being, because I'm a senator right now, 
So you're still in government a little bit, but the biggest difference from where I was two weeks ago to today is you have a secret service detail, which you sort of see these guys all floating around in the background. And uh, it just totally changes everything, right? So I went for a, a walk with my wife this morning and there are all of these people just walking by like, oh, is that JD Vance? And they wouldn't notice me beforehand, but the reason they notice you now is because you have like 15 people following you around with guns yeah. and bulletproof vests, right? So there's just, there's no, you know, we're done being anonymous basically at this stage in our lives, but we're having a good time with it. I mean, it's cool. We get to fly around in our, our nice plane and get to meet a lot of people and we're having a good time. How is it having the secret service like around all the time? <laughs> well, it's, it's weird because there's no, like I said, you're not anonymous anymore, right? But then there are all these like weird little ways where they're just part of your lives and they're great people, right? I mean, I, I haven't met a secret service agent yet that I don't like, but um, like, for example, a couple of days ago, we were walking our dog we were a really big dog, a German Shepherd. And, um, you know, the dog, like, goes to the bathroom like dogs do. And I look back at the agent who was on the detail, and I'm like, is this the sort of thing you're meant to protect me from? <laughs> and her eyes got real big, like, is he really asking me to pick up dog shit right now? And, of course, I wasn't, right? That would be a totally ridiculous thing to do. But um, it, it's just, there. think about it. You always have somebody part of your life now that's following you around. And that's just a totally different vibe. So, so the Secret Service, they pick up for you? <laughs> no, no. That's a huge perk. They probably, they probably would if you asked them to, but yeah. I feel like that'd be a really uh, thing to do to ask them to pick up after your dog. So no, I feel like if they're going to take a bullet for me, that's enough. I can handle the dog. It's nice. pretty cool too, because I feel like, are you the youngest vice president to ever run? I think so. Um, or at least maybe not in the history of the country, but I'm certainly like in our generation, recent history. I know I'm the first millennial. So to, to 39. Be second, I'm 39 years old. I turned 40 actually in a few days, which I'm very depressed about. When's the 40th? August 2nd, which I think is what's, Friday. What's good for the 40th? <laughs> Dang, are you like party. <laughs> Nothing anymore, man. I've, I've got people following me around. I can't do anything fun. We're going to go out to dinner with my wife and a bunch of friends and uh, go swimming afterwards. That's that's about as much excitement as we can get into now. Oh, but kind of sucks be good. that the 40th lands on the <laughs> VP run. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's funny. All my buddies who are, you know, because we're all similar age, they all have 40th birthday parties, and they're going doing stuff fun. Like, I actually had a, a couple friends who came out to Vegas a few months ago, and they're like, oh, come out to Vegas with us. And I was just like, no. Unfortunately, that phase of my life is uh, is over. Yeah. You said yeah. it's August 2nd? August 2nd. I don't think we're doing anything August 2nd. <laughs> He's trying to say <laughs> <laughs> No, we love, we love to attend. Before, I think I'd get in a little bit of trouble uh, hanging out with you guys on August second. So I should <laughs> chill. By, by the way, this is so. This is like your your guys' brand. This of is seltzer. our our seltzer happy dad. Yeah. Okay. Nice. That's so we exciting. just became the the number four seltzer nationwide. Oh, congratulations! We just passed uh, Bud Light seltzer. So you guys like started this. This is started your business. It, started okay. it from the ground up. Yeah. Okay. Can I steal a pack? Is that all 100%. right? Hundred percent. Yeah, we'll load we'll load up the the plane with some. We have to be careful though, because I can only take like seventy five dollars in gifts or something. So you have to tell oh, okay. me what the retail price okay. is. Wait, that's a we thing. To, we have to come under. Yeah, it's you 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 can accept small gifts, but nothing big. Huh? Yeah, so that's a thing. In, in as a, as a VP or just in, in politics? I think it's being a senator. Actually, I don't think senator. it's running for office. I think okay. it's being in office. But you know, I always like check. It's. It's one of these things where you just your life changes where, you know, if I go to dinner with my buddies, they love it now because I always pay because I'm never really sure if they're allowed to buy me dinner anymore. Right. Because you know, like, I don't have to email a campaign lawyer to go hang out with my buddies. Right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just pay for dinner. So, of course, they get the most expensive wine and the yeah. most expensive thing now. So it's great. Was, was got great friends. Was being a VP like always a part of like your thought where you wanted to do in politics or is this something that just kind of like you knew was coming or was it kind of random? No, totally random, right? So I ran for, so I, I, so I was a business guy. I started a venture capital firm and had been doing that for a while. And the home state senator where we live in Cincinnati, he dropped out, became, or I guess retired, I should say. And that was in 2021, decided to run for his seat. And that was the first time I'd ever been involved in politics. So I get elected at the end of 22 and, uh, you know, sort of have been a senator for the past 18 months or so. And then a few months ago, people start saying, you know, I think Donald Trump may choose you as VP. And I'm like, no way. There's no way it's going to happen. And then like a couple months later, they start doing vetting, which is a totally bizarre experience, by the way. We could talk all the whole the whole time about vetting. Uh, so like, for example, <laughs> lawyer comes to your house asks you the most obtrusive questions, the most intrusive questions imaginable, right? And my, my wife's sitting there, we have three kids upstairs asleep. And at one point the lawyer is like, well, I'm gonna ask some uncomfortable questions. And I'm like, okay, you know, have at it. And he goes, do you have any secret family? And I'm like, are you serious? Do I have any secret family? Like, what do you mean? He said, well, sometimes people will have like, you know, 
another spouse and they'll have like other kids in a place like Alaska. I'm like, dude, I've never even been to Alaska. Of course, oh I don't God. have a secret you're family. You're getting grilled by the and lawyer oh my, and your yeah, wife at the same yeah, time. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if I did, I'm not going to admit it in front of my wife right yeah. now. Like, it's one of those questions where if you've gotten to that point in your life and you're such a dishonest person that you have a secret family in Alaska, I think that most people would just, I assume, hide it at that point. Yeah. Um, but, you know, no, I don't have a secret family in Alaska. And it's all these just weird questions they ask. Wow. Because they want to make sure that they're prepared for the news media firestorm. So it's a pretty, pretty wild experience. How did Mr. Trump ask you to become VP? So for a couple months, you sort of knew that you were on the short list, right? So they were, you know, asking about everything you'd ever said and asking about everybody you know. And, you know, do you have any family members that might say something negative? They're just doing kind of a basic, they call it vetting. And they're trying to find out everything. So I knew I was at least on the short list for a little while. But the Monday morning of the Republican National Convention, that's the first day of it, we fly to Milwaukee with, we have three little kids, seven, four, and two. So we fly to Milwaukee, and I have no idea what's going on. And the plane doesn't have Wi-Fi on it. So it's about an hour flight, and I land, and I've got like 350 messages, right? And one of them is from somebody on the Trump campaign and says, hey, you know, check your phone make sure you don't miss a call because a really important call is coming. So I'm like, oh shit, right? Either a good call or a bad call, but it's an important call. And about an hour later, I get another message from the same person who says, hey, you just missed a really important call. So uh, hey, I'm like, oh no. So I call Trump and I'm like, hey, sir, what's going on? He's like, JD, you missed a very important phone call. And now I'm going to have to pick somebody <laughs> else. And I'm, you know, I like tense up and almost have a heart attack. And the, the crazy thing about it is my son, who's seven, is in the hotel room with me. And he's really into Pokemon cards right now. He's going through a Pokemon phase. Are you guys into Pokemon? I was. Yeah. Back in the day. Okay. Yeah. That's a okay. big phase right now, I think, in general. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he's really into it. So, he's trying to talk to me about Pikachu. <laughs> and I'm on the phone with Donald Trump. And I'm like, son, shut the hell up for 30 seconds about Pikachu. This is the most important phone call of my life. Please just let me take this phone call. And he doesn't care. He's like, who's, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't know what the president of the United States means. So uh, Trump hears him and says, who is that? I'm like, that's my seven-year-old son. He's like, put him on speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> and so I do. And he, he, he proceeds, Trump proceeds to read the statement that he's about to put out, making me his VP nominee. And he asks my son, he's like, what do you think about that? And my son's like, oh, it sounds pretty good, you know? <laughs> and he goes, okay, fine. And he hangs up the phone and the statement goes out five minutes later. And then my whole life changed. And that's how wow. it happened. Wow. Yeah. And what, was, what was the initial reaction that you felt just from the people of being the nomination? First of all, p people were super supportive and excited, right? So, you know, you're at the RNC convention. There's, I don't know, 10,000, 15,000 people there. And the biggest news of the week is who's the VP nominee going to be? So as soon as it gets announced, there's just this rush of, you positive attention and people, you know, hugging you, everybody you see is back slapping you. And that's very, that's very positive and very fun. My, my wife, who doesn't like love the spotlight, she's not sort of one of these people who loves politics. She doesn't seek it out. Uh, she, she even was kind of getting into it because people were just so nice and friendly and, you know, saying, saying all kinds of good things. And then, you know, for a few days, I sort of joke that I got like a 24 hour honeymoon because everything goes really well. And then of course the media starts attacking you, right. which is what you sign up for and you expect it. But it's been, I mean, 95% positive. It's just been a very cool experience. Yeah. And I mean, j just like you take since he asked me to be his nominee, right? So I've been in Milwaukee. I've been to Vegas. We're going to Reno today. I've been uh, to California. I've been to Michigan. I've been to Wisconsin. I've been to Pennsylvania. I mean, like I've seen more in the country in the past two weeks. I just wanted to ask, when did your opinion change on Trump? Because you weren't a Trump supporter back then. And what, what led yeah. to that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, it, it's funny Thank because you. for a long time until Biden had this big debate gaffe that blew up his whole campaign, there was this thing where the, the media would say, well, Biden has bad memory, but so does Donald Trump. And I'm always like, what the hell are you talking about? Donald Trump remembers in excruciating detail, everything I said about him nine years ago, right? The guy <laughs> has a memory, like a steel trap. I wish that his memory was like Joe Biden. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, I was critical of Trump in 2015, 2016. And I think, like, there are a lot of different things you could say about it. But fundamentally, it boils down to two things. Number one, I didn't think he was going to be a great president. I, in fact, thought he was a really good president, like the, certainly the best president of my lifetime. And so when the facts change, I think thinking people should change their mind, right? OK, I was wrong about the guy and he was great. But there's something a little bit deeper, actually, where I kind of 
learned that the media is so dishonest about Trump that a lot of the things that I thought about him in 2016 weren't just like, you got to change your mind. It's just outright that was false. So, for example, I don't know if you guys remember this, but you know, there was this thing that happened in Charlottesville where white supremacists killed this girl and very tragic situation. And the media said, well, Trump stood up for the white supremacist. And there was a time in my life where I would have believed the media, what they said about it. And then you go and read what the transcript of what he actually said. And it's like, wait a second, he actually condemned the white supremacist. He never said that there were very good people on both sides. What he said is that some of the protesters were good people, not like the white supremacists who murdered this girl. And you realize so much of what the media says about this guy is totally dishonest. I think once you accept that frame of mind, you start to think for yourself a little bit. And when I started doing that, I started realizing, one, he's a good president, but two, he's just not the guy. He's not the scary person the media makes him out to be. Yeah, this is this is like the, the, the most sort of concerning thing, I think, as a just a person in general, and specifically in the United States, is like, where do you actually trust and what do you actually trust? Because there's so much backing from big companies, big tech, yep. where it's like they're invested in one side winning versus the other Absolutely. side losing. And it just becomes this really weird space where you're like, what is actually real? And you yourself even admit to seeing something some way and just taking it for what it was and yeah. seeing it change. My question for you is like, as this all progresses, like for example, this currently you try to Google the attempt assassination on Donald Trump and it doesn't even come this up. It's crazy, yeah. And it's like, yep. that's one of the most concerning exactly. things. It's crazy. It's, yeah. it's like a- You type in assassination of TRU and yeah. it doesn't autocomplete Trump. Yeah. It happened two weeks ago. And then you look at the biggest donors for like the other side. We're talking about as far as like the Biden Harris campaign. And it's right. like Google is one of their biggest donors. Yep. So and that's public. That's public. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like that's Google all real. is that's right. the biggest donor to the Democrat. Yeah. Oh, party. and their employers are huge, yeah. huge donors of the Democrats. I mean, it's I, I have I have friends who work there. I have friends who involved in the tech sector. Um, Google is a straight up insane co company. The people, the senior leadership, the people who run the search algorithms, it is a, effectively a left-wing propaganda machine. And there are all these other ways you come up to. I, sorry to interrupt you. But no, you're great. Like, this was a thing that, that I, I, like, a couple of years ago when I was doing my Senate campaign, somebody said, type in, go and Google, can a man get pregnant? And I was like, well, why would I do that? If, you know, I know the answer to that question. He's like, just go do it. You type into Google, I don't know if this is still true, but it was true two years ago. Can a man get pregnant? And the first search result is yes, a man can get pregnant. In fact, it happens more often than people think. What the right? <laughs> it's a weird company, but it actually, you realize it controls the flow of information in our country. It, but that's what's scary, because like most people are not going to do like the, any sort of research or looking in deeper, yeah. and they just take it for face value. So it's just kind of like, where do we go from here as, as technology advances and as like that sort of side of things just becomes more and more powerful? Like, how do we actually know what's real? Well, that's a good question, man. Um, I think part of it is you have to accept if you're a consumer of information that everybody's trying to sell you something, right? And you can't just assume because you go in and Google something, it's true. And you can't assume because you go and watch something at YouTube or go and watch something, I mean, even a rumble, like no, you have to sort of think for yourself and you have to assume yeah. that somebody's trying to filter their own bias and put it into something that you're consuming. And that's, that's kind of the attitude that I take towards news. And you, you just have to, as much as possible, think for yourself. I actually think it's better now than it was five years ago. Cause yeah, Google's still crazy, but now people are watching podcasts like yours. I mean, I, I, you know, millions of people watch your podcast, right? So just this, this movement of people thinking for themselves, I think is a much bigger deal and has changed the way we consume information. And we just have to keep on going down that pathway yeah. being skeptical, thinking for yourself, consuming alternative sources of information. And I, that's probably how you break the fever, but it is a problem, right? Yeah. Let me give you another example of Google, right? So what, what, what do you think is the biggest email client in the world? It's probably Gmail. In fact, I'm almost certain it's Gmail, yeah. but I use Gmail, so I'm not criticizing, but um, one of the main ways we fundraise for political campaigns in our country, I don't know if they, how they do it in Canada, but you, you, you send text messages, right? Or you send emails. Well, let's say that Google filtered 90% of the Republican fundraising emails into spam, but only filter 10% of the Democrat fundraising emails into spam. Well, the Democrats are gonna raise way more money. That's not hypothetical, that is exactly what happened. In fact, I've, I've actually, we've tried to file a lawsuit against Google to try to get that changed, but there are all of these weird, subtle ways where Google and companies like it try to control the flow of information. And I think the long-term solution, just one more thing on this is, 
we, we have to promote a culture of technology innovation where new companies can take on the big guys. Because in Silicon Valley, the big tech companies, they're all crazy, right? They're all dominated by insane people. Whereas the little tech companies, the upstarts, right? The Bitcoin guys and the AI guys, a lot of them are a lot more rational and a lot more independent. Maybe they're libertarian, maybe they're liberal, but they at least think for themselves. We got to empower them to try to take on the big incumbents. And that's one of the things these guys try to prevent. All right, guys, I'm going to interrupt the pod really, really quick. I want to let you guys know about my favorite healthy snack, board jerky. All right, you guys know, you've seen me. I'm trying to be a little more healthy these days. I was getting too many comments. You guys telling me I look pregnant and shit. I was staying up all night crying. So now I'm into healthy snacks and board jerky is one of my favorites. This jerky, if you guys try it, I don't even have to say it, try it for yourself. The quality of the jerky is absolutely unbelievable. And I'm a big jerky guy and this jerky is by far the best. I'm traveling a lot all the time, so I always have board jerky on me when I get hungry. There's four different flavors. My favorite's the original. The original, the macros are unbelievable. There's lots and lots of protein. So it's just a great healthy snack. Keep the barrel in check. But yeah, trust me, if you guys like jerky, try this out. And when you try it, you'll thank me. It's available on amazon.com. The reviews are going through the roof. Everybody loves it. So go to amazon.com right now. Give board jerky out a try. Keep it in your gym bags. Keep it in your backpacks. This is my favorite healthy snack. It's on me all the time. Amazon.com, board jerky. Let's get back on the pod. Yeah. Is it going to be harder this time around for like Google and those companies to pull the stuff that they did last election cycle? It's a good question. I, I don't know. I, th I think it probably is harder because people are just much more skeptical of accepting the narrative. Um, I, I see this a lot in you know, college campuses and 2016 and 2020, there was a real fear of people. They didn't want to be ostracized. They didn't want to say what was actually on their mind. They were a little bit terrified of the social pressure. I just think people give much less shit about it than they did four years ago and certainly than eight, eight years ago. And I do think that is empowering, right? Courage is contagious. And the more that people, again, trust their own instincts and consume their own information, I think that it empowers the truth to come out a little bit more. But I won't present the bias isn't, it, isn't there, but I think it's probably less powerful than it was a few years ago. I think people have just seen, too, over the past four years what a shit show it's been. Exactly. And how, Bi uh, how bad Biden's been. I know, Brad, you tweeted right. about it, too, right? How everyone's kind of coming out of the woodwork now yeah. and supporting Trump. Yeah. Like, I remember when we had him on our podcast near the last election. I watched that. It was a good episode. We got a lot of shit for it. And, oh, and now it's just completely different where everyone in our like community and space is like now supporting Trump. And like, it's just crazy to see how much, you know, everyone's kind of flipped, which is a good thing. Yeah, it is. It is a good thing. And I think especially I mean, you guys are probably in your 20s, early 30s. I just turned 30. Uh, wait, well, hold on. Brad, are you are you older? I'm 35. Yeah. Okay. 35, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, is right. that a shot at me? I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I, you got the VP right. Are you trying to take shots? No, no, I wasn't taking shots. My bad. Only, come on, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Get together. My bad. It's 90s, 30s. This, right? this is the guy who buys you beer when you guys. Go yeah, through. <laughs> he's been that guy <laughs> for a while. How old are you? Tell him how old you are. Around Shut 30. Up, man. Uh, but so, so what? What I think is is definitely true for like young Americans, especially. And I'm I'm 39, so you know, people call 39 year olds geriatric millennials because we're millennials, but we're sort of on the the older side of the millennial generation. I I do think like, look, if you want to buy a home. It's got a hell of a lot harder to do that under the Kamala Harris, Joe Biden administration, right? If you want to sort of take a vacation, it's gotten a lot more expensive. If you just want to live in a safe community, that's gotten harder because there's more drugs coming across. I, I, people, people, you know, believe their own eyes more than they believe that the narrative the media sells. And I don't know how Kamala Harris can look at the country and say, look, things are way better than they were four years ago. She just can't do that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Were you surprised by the the way things played out with that? Or did you did you guys see it coming? You know, a, a little bit. Like, it's funny. The president, what, meaning President Trump, was way less surprised about it than I was. And I think his campaign was way less surprised about it. I mean, because, again, I, I knew I was being vetted. I remember talking to somebody on his campaign in early June. And this was even before the debate debacle. And she was like, look, we think there's a really good chance that if you get picked, you're not going to be debating Kamala Harris. You're going to be debating whoever Kamala Harris chooses because we don't think Joe Biden can survive. The poll numbers were just so bad. He's, he's just so bad that they didn't think he would make it to November. And they were right, of course. So, I mean, I was just, it's kind of shocking when it happens, even when you expect it to happen. So I guess I expected it to happen, but I was still surprised when he actually pulled the trigger. He's the president of the United States. Think about this. Mm. And he just, 
sent a letter out one day and said, I'm not running for president anymore. That's never happened in the lifetime of any person in this room. Yeah. Is also that even like, like, yeah, is that even legal? Like the way that, cause well, I'm, I, I'm reading a bunch it's of weird. It's, I'm reading a bunch of stuff and it's like, didn't they just bypass? They're supposed to be the party for democracy. Yes. Yeah, so and they kind of just this bypass. Is yeah. I they agree. bypass well, like the total yeah, yeah, no. democratic process. Well, cause well, they, they yes. sit on a side and they say, you know, Donald Trump is against democracy. Yeah. And, but they're also now, they, they, held someone long enough to pass up where they could actually vote for a new kind of like nominee and then they just picked who they wanted exactly so there's right. actually no democracy in that not at all and 14 million people look it's not my party and i wouldn't have voted for him but 14 million people voted for him to be the nominee of the democrat party yes how many people have voted for kamala harris to be the nominee of the democrat party none zero right? yeah. not a single person so it's funny they accuse me of Don and donald trump of being threats to democracy like Trump is the most popular person in the party. He still ran through the primary process because that's what you have to do, right? You have to persuade right. voters that you're the guy. That's kind of how the system works. And um, I look, it, w basically what happened is Barack Obama, the Clinton family, and a few billionaires got in a room together and said, hey, this guy's political dead weight. Let's throw him overboard. And that's, that's really creepy if you think about it. But then you realize he's the president of the United States. And it kind of makes you question, what is the real power center in this country yeah, if unelected a officials. few billionaires and a few unelected officials can throw yeah. the president overboard? I, I think, you know, I've tried to make this argument to Democrats is, look, if you are uncomfortable by how this process shaked out and you feel kind of insulted as a voter, vote for Republicans. You may not agree with us on everything, but at least in our party, we believe you should have to persuade people, not try to run this corrupt process in the background. It's yeah. weird how it's, it's, it's always the, it's weird. I don't know. It's like they're, you know, these are the bad people, but they're, they're, they're doing the bad things. That's right. And it's interesting. You know what I've noticed it is interesting. for the, for the younger people too, for like the younger voters, what I've noticed is how big social media has played. Yeah. You're, you said you're a millennial. Yeah. So have you noticed, has, has that been better for you playing in the social media? Cause what I noticed too is whenever you go on TikTok. You scroll three times, you see Joe Biden falling, falling off his bike. You only see negative things, right? Yeah. So anything you say now can get clipped up. That's right. So has that played a role for you? Yeah, it, it has. I mean, you know, I, I think just instinctively I understand social media a little bit better because I, you know, I come from, I'm sort of the generation of social media. You know, Facebook became a really big thing. I was in the Marines, but towards the end of my Marine Corps career and then as I got into college. And um, so I, I think we use it more like I don't, I don't. You know, most politicians, they have a staff member who sort of runs their Twitter. I yeah. don't do that. Like, I just put it, whatever, I guess it's X now, but I just put whatever I want to on X. And sometimes I get in trouble for it. But I just think it's much more important to be unfiltered and to be like a real human being. You're going to make mistakes sometimes, but real humans make mistakes. But I do think our engagement is a lot higher because of it. And, you know, th this was one thing that came out of the, the, because I'm not a big TikTok guy and we're starting to try to use TikTok. Um, but, not my account, but there was a ton of TikTok activity that was positive in the Milwaukee convention because I took my kids for a walk in downtown Milwaukee, right? And I, <laughs> do you guys know this movie, Forgetting Sarah Marshall with yeah. Russell Brand? It's like I, one, it's I like watched it on the plane the other day. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. So I'm, I'm walking downtown Milwaukee. It's, what I, it's a great movie. Sorry. It's, yeah. why? I think he's lying about what, watching are you an anti forgetting it ceremony? No, I, I love it, but I think he's making that up that he watched it today. <laughs> okay, just, That's all. I'm sorry. I recently just went through a breakup. Okay. So, so <laughs> he watched it with his ex. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, man. Yeah. It's okay. Sorry, sorry to bring up bad, bad, but hopefully, bad hopefully this interview will I, help, I, help me get her back. I, I hope you're doing okay. <laughs> Let me know if I can help. Um, so, Russell Brand is the rock star in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I'm walking downtown Milwaukee with my three little kids, and Russell Brand comes in the other direction. It's like one of the few times I've ever been starstruck in my whole life. My favorite line of that movie is take my eyes, not the shirt. Do you know, you know what I'm talking <laughs> Yeah, Jonah Hill. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so, you know, that, but that interaction got a ton of viral content on, t on TikTok. And so, yeah, we, we, we try to use it. And even when we don't try to use it, I think we benefit from it because, you know, I'm not falling off my bike or right. falling down the stairs. And I think it makes like the, the younger audience way more relatable with you, Trump, than like the Democratic Party. I think so. And the thing that Republicans, we really do have going for us is because we're so sick of being filtered and we're so sick of being told what we're allowed to say and what we're allowed to think is Republicans are just much more comfortable with humor, right? Yeah, yeah. Trump is, I mean, all these great leadership qualities. I love the guy, but he's also just funny as shit. For sure. Right? One of the yeah. funniest you guys, guys ever. Oh, I, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Right. You spend time with Trump. You're like, oh my God, this dude is off the charts. Funny. He's so funny. And I mean, like I'll tell you his story. So again, my wife doesn't love the, the spotlight. 
we're doing this fundraiser for Trump in my hometown of Cincinnati. And, um, you know, raising a lot of money. And then you do photos the way these fundraisers always work is you do a line of photos. And, you know, we finally, like my wife and I are the last people in line. And he gives Usha a big hug. He's like, Usha, you look so beautiful. I'm so glad to see you. And then he's like, what do you think about politics? And she gives this super diplomatic answer. She's like, well, sir, you know, JD really believes in it. And he really believes in public service. And I'm glad to be supportive of him. And he looks at her and says, yeah, my wife hates it too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's just, you know, he's, he's got a natural humor to him that I do think makes him much more relatable. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Like, is Kamala Harris funny? No. Right, no. she's just not. Uh-uh. But her laugh sucks too. Yeah, well, Uh-oh. more yeah, more than that, um, it makes me you know it's like it makes you feel kind of creeped out a little bit, right? Like why is she why is she laughing at the things that she laughs at? But yeah, Trump is just he's got he's got a good sense of humor and that helps him I think politically. What's what's the worst things about Kamala Harris? I just reminded me when you said laughing like she's laughing about not going to the border and all those interviews, which yeah. is just weird. But just what, weird. what do you think's like to our audience? Like what are the main scary things about Kamala Harris becoming president. One is, okay, I don't actually think Kamala Harris, like if you want to do this job, you have to actually, you should care about public policy, right? Like policy makes people's lives better. And I've never seen an interview with Kamala Harris where I'm like, oh, she really cares about this thing. And she really wants to do this thing to make people's lives better. Like, I just don't think, I think she's, she just doesn't actually care that much about the details. And that's not the kind of president you want. You know, my, my thing, my biggest issue, because I think it's transformative in a bad way for the country, is like you can't let 25 million people in your country illegally with no control. The drug cartels have taken over. You've got record amounts of people dying of fentanyl, which we know the drug cartels are bringing in. Like all these problems with the border, she is the border czar and she hasn't done anything about it. Right. So if your job is to secure the southern border and you've been in power for three and a half years and you didn't do shit, you don't get a promotion. You should get fired. Right. And I think that's a big, big part of what's wrong with her entire campaign is she's sort of trying to run away from the Biden record because she knows it's not popular, but you were the vice president. Clearly this guy's like practically brain dead. Clearly you were the person driving the ship here and you were his vice president and you own a lot of these failures. Um, but I mean, there, there are little things, I mean, we talked for so long about some of these issues, but you know, I, I'm a big believer that we have to like build more stuff in America. Like I come from a manufacturing town. We got to make more stuff. If you want to make more stuff, you have to have low cost energy. Well, she wants to destroy the American energy economy in the name of green energy, um, which is just going to ship manufacturing to China, which is the dirtiest economy in the world. So if you actually care about clean air and clean water, which I do, you don't want to ship manufacturing to China. You want to bring it home. But her policies have the exact opposite outcome. So just a, just a whole host of things. She's wrong on the policy. You know, something the media doesn't pick up on that I think should become a bigger issue is staff turnover goes to whether you can get good people to work in your government, right? The, the presidency is too big for any one person. You make the big decisions, but you need people to work for you. She has 92% staff turnover. Wow. How can you staff a government if 92% of the people who work for you don't want to work for you? That's a, that's a bad thing. Meaning wow. people are like quitting the administration? Quitting. Yeah. Yes. Is there any- During the last four years? People who work for her, correct. 92% oh, yeah, turnover, yeah. Has there been any like, rationale or why that's happened you know i have heard different stories and i don't put much stock in what i read in the media i mean what, what i've heard is that she's just like yells at people a lot she's mean she's kind of insecure and you combine insecure with mean like you can do one of those two things maybe and be a decent boss but you can't do both of them but i i don't know i just know that the, the the data is the data and she has really bad staff turnover but we need good people like i'm a republican i don't want her to win but if she wins you need good people to actually work in the government and I think it's going to be a problem if she wins. Going back to X, um, wanted to ask, what's your relationship with uh, Elon Musk? Yeah, so, you know, I knew it back in my tech days, I knew Peter Thiel is a, is a very good friend of mine. And um, Peter and Elon sort of got their start in Silicon Valley together. And so I kind of knew Elon a little bit through Peter. And then, you know, Elon, not all that different from me, has had a bit of a political awakening <laughs> over the last few years. I think like a lot of us is just looking around and saying, this is too crazy what happened to common sense and i think that's why he bought x like i actually think it was you know who knows if he'll ever make any money over it but he wanted to buy x to ensure that there was actually a place for free speech on the internet and he be believed that was important because he recognized that people's opinions were being censored by the googles and the facebooks of the world so um i i you know i don't know him super well 
but I, you know, we hang out, we text every now and then, and, you know, we, we sort of bounce ideas. He's a very funny guy. I don't think the people, the, the, the media realizes this, but something about Elon that I care about, I don't know if anybody else cares about it, but one of my big things is I think way too much of the modern economy is kind of fake. Like if you look at Google, like what is Google's actual business? Google sells digital advertisements based on the search results, right? Yeah. Yeah. What is Facebook's business model? To sell digital advertisements based on how people use Facebook. Elon is building rockets that go to the moon and Mars, right? He's building a real business. And I just, I, I love that you have an entrepreneur like that who's kind of in the old American model of like Howard Hughes of, I'm gonna build really cool shit that goes to space. And I think it's really inspiring to people that he's not just like trying to sell targeted ads to a smaller and smaller slice of the country. He's trying to build big things. You know, he's building, whether it's, it's solar panels or electric cars or rockets, or he's trying to connect the entire world through satellite internet. He's just doing a lot of cool stuff. And it's harder to do that stuff because you got to deal with regulators in Washington and you know, people come after you. But I think it's much more productive and it's, it's a lot cooler. I have a question about uh, just just obviously, you know, running and, and being in politics. Do you take what sometimes the media says about you personally? Like, I don't know if you saw that there was like a whole clip of like people calling you weird. <laughs> Did you see that? Um, it was like I, a clip of like, that. I certainly know the Kamala campaign wants to call me weird. But yeah, I but I'm clip. wondering why that word and because like it was on like a it was like clipped on like a thousand different media outlets like they were all using the same word. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know if it's like something they focus grouped and decided to push on us. I mean, <laughs> like I'm a pretty normal guy. I've got a wife yeah. and kids and I like to hang out and, you know, watch football and I care about this stuff because I care about the country. Yeah. My attitude on this is I, my, my best guess this is just a total guess, is that her campaign is run by a lot of like 24 year old social media interns who maybe were bullied in school. And so now they've decided they're gonna do that the same thing. They're gonna take that like attitude of the middle school social scene and try to run a campaign on it. I just don't think most Americans buy it or care, yeah. but they, they're certainly pushing it. I'm certainly aware of it. But my attitude is like, I'm just gonna be who I am. And if they want to attack me for whatever they're going to attack me on, that's fine. You just got to kind of power through it and do your thing. Yeah. She, she's she been attacked for a lot too. Yeah. What, I mean, what? it's, it's funny. It's like the people who call me weird want to give like hormone therapies and sterilize nine-year-olds. Like I think it's a lot weirder uh, oh, than, man. you know, me just like living a normal life with my kids and my wife. But this is, this is what they do. I think is they latch onto a message and they try to sell it even if it's fake. And I think, I think, you know, again, to go back to something Trump said, we were talking about Trump earlier is Trump's superpower in politics is he just doesn't give a shit, right? He doesn't care what they say about him. He's going to be himself. He's going to tell jokes. He's going to say things that drive some people off a wall. But then when you actually listen to what he said, he's like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I think that you just, if you're going to be in politics in the social media age, you've got to kind of have a thick skin and just do what you need to do. And they'll, they'll dig up anything from your history. <laughs> I've learned that the hard way the last few few days, man. Let's see how much sugar is in the leading hard iced teas. The competition has 20 grams of sugar per can, and there's 12 cans in a case, which comes to 240 grams. Let's measure that. So that's 69 sugar cubes per case. Instead, Happy Dad hard iced tea has one gram of sugar per can, or only 12 grams of sugar for the entire case. That's only three sugar cubes. Drink Happy Dad hard iced tea, and don't feel guilty about it. Well, I have a question about the, we, before, before this yeah, question, yeah, sure. we were talking about like the sterilizing of kids and all this stuff. Like what, what do you think the actual purpose of that shit is? I don't know, man. Like what would the... Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's funny. I had a friend from law school. I got into a big argument about this with a few years ago, and you know, we're we're basically not friends anymore, which is sad because I love this person. But you know, I, I think part of it is these people think that everything that's different about men and women is they use this word socially constructed, right? It all comes from culture, and it's like we all know this, right? Men and women, yeah, some of our differences are cultural, some of our differences are just like basic biology, right? Yeah. And I think they're so uncomfortable with that. They, they try to biologically change men into women and women into men. Because if you can get rid of the biological differences, then you can kind of get rid of all the other differences too. And I, I mean, I, I, you, I think you guys, um, 
you guys know Tucker Carlson, right? Yeah. 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 So, so Tucker and I have talked a lot about this, but you know, men and women being different to me is not like a bad thing. It's a source of one of the coolest parts about being like a living, breathing human being in the world, right? Is yeah. women think about stuff slightly differently than men do. And that, that is, that is a good thing. And we shouldn't try to like destroy those differences in the name of equality. We should give women and men equal, op equal, equal opportunity and equal chances. Yeah. But sometimes people are going to make different choices, right? And that's okay. And because men and women make different choices, that's like not an excuse to sterilize kids to try to turn a girl into a boy or vice versa. But that's what they're doing. And I mean, the tell on this stuff, like I really didn't care about this stuff until a few years ago. I think maybe being a father changes your, your mind a little bit on this stuff. But the tell for me was when they started saying, well, this stuff is totally reversible. If you give hormonal therapies to a nine-year-old kid, that is not totally reversible. I mean, these kids have like bladder problems and other stuff that's just gross. And why are we doing this to our kids without any real confidence in the science? It makes you realize, frankly, a lot of the public health establishment in this country is pretty deranged. Crazy. And it's, it's also a whole nother, like, I don't think people even recognize this. It's a whole nother, like, a revenue source for yes. the, the, phar the, the, the pharmaceutical Absolutely. industry where it's like, it, they're making it like, uh, I forget what the word is when you can get your insurance to pay for something where it's like, if it's a, a life, you, like, you need it. Yep. They're making it, it like it becomes a, reimbursable. Exactly. Yes. So it's like, people don't even recognize That's dark where dude, now it's, it's uh, yes yeah. yes that's the, the exact right word for it. it's dark i mean dude like one of the things i actually agree with at least the old school left on is you got to be careful about when big corporations use financial incentives to control the government right yeah. like you don't want people getting rich because they passed a law I know. you want people getting rich because they make products that people need right so this is always a criticism that the old left made about American healthcare is you don't want to force doctors to give people something just because it's going to make some pharmaceutical company rich, right? That doesn't make any sense. And yet we right now are giving kids hormonal therapies. Pharmaceutical companies are making billions of dollars off of this shit. Yeah. And none of us are looking around and saying, well, wait a second. Is this good because they're making money off of it? Or is it good because it's actually in the best interest of these kids? And that is something, again, the Democratic Party of 30 years ago would have went wild over this because it's money intersecting with medicine in a way that's really bad for human beings. And now the only people talking about it are Republicans. You know, it's weird. I saw the Gavin Newsom pass that bill recently about how uh, if a kid wants to become trans at school, they don't have to tell the parents. Which is sick. Which I blew my mind to even hear something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Which is sick because, well, I mean, like all of us have been teenagers before. All teenagers go through awkward phases where they don't exactly know what their place is. Yeah. They, you know, people go through emo phases or they, you know, they dye their hair black. Like every kid goes through some developmental phase where they're confused. And what this weird movement is doing is encouraging people to, to like latch onto their insecurities not tell their parents about them, right? Yeah. And then I, I've, I've, I haven't confirmed this, so check my facts here, but I've also heard that in California, like if you're a parent and you think maybe it's a little crazy to give your 12 year old hormonal therapies, you can be at risk of having your kids taken away. Like, like I'm a father of three, that would make me go absolutely, well, like we're moving to the hills, keep your hands off my kids, this is crazy town. But also another level to that is, in that bill that you're talking about passing this, like, you know, yeah. it's the gender affirming care and they don't have to tell the parents. So the kids are just talking to some random adult about how they feel a certain Absolutely. way. And like, that's even beyond what you're saying, even more concerning. Cause it's like that human yes. being could have completely different biases. Yeah. And so they're going to input them on whoever's the kid is telling them yeah. like how I feel. And, and not just biases. I don't trust some stranger to talk to my kid about their 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 sex and their gender period right? like i don't yeah. period whether right? it's that or just the normal shit it's like yeah. why are you just not talking to kids about math and yes exactly school and, shit yeah and by the way we're falling behind in math and reading so we, we you know our leaders are trying to convince our teachers to talk to kids about gender reassignment when they're 12 years old meanwhile we don't do math as good as we used to we don't do reading as good as we used to maybe we should focus on the shit that schools are actually supposed to teach kids again so it's stupid. so com it's common sense right yeah and by the way that's their view is that we should be teaching kids gender reassignment and they think that we're weird doesn't make a lot of sense do you see all the olympic stuff that was bizarre oh man the ceremony should that was ceremony. so weird it's just a slap in the face to christians and anybody who has 
I would say aesthetic sense, right? It wasn't just weird. I think it was all ugly. religions. It was ugly. <laughs> like I, I watch this thing, and I, you know, like you want the Olympic opening ceremony to be beautiful, right? You 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 want it to like elevate the human spirit, and it's just this creepy thing <laughs> where people are dressed up as these little nymphs doing the last. I, 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 I was grossed was out, by out. Some I guys' was grossed balls, out by like, it. what is? What's the purpose though? Is it just like? <laughs> do you think they do it to cause like? Well, we know this is probably going to get like more attention. Yes, I think they, they do it to cause shock, and that's why I try to just ignore this stuff. Like I, I saw the Olympics opening ceremony for a couple of minutes. I turned it off. I tried not to think about it anymore. But yeah, this is this is the thing that you know. I feel like art, the idea of art in its best form, right? And I'm not like an art guy. The first time I ever went to an art museum, I think it was when my wife made me go. But at its best, right, it's uplifting the human spirit. It's showing you beautiful things. It's making you think of what's possible. Whatever this is, it's not that, right? It's just yeah. shocking people to try to draw attention, which maybe works for social media clicks, but I think it makes our whole society a lot, a lot darker. I know you're against, like, a lot of wars and stuff. Yeah. What, what was it like when you were serving in Iraq? Yeah, I mean, so I, I was... I went in to the Marine Corps in 2003, and... So my grandma had six grandkids and three of us enlisted in the United States Marines. So it became kind of a family tradition thing. And I wasn't an infantryman. So I, I, you know, like the grunts, as we called them, had much more like direct access to danger than we did. And what, you know, in, in Iraq, what, what was so weird about it, like the two things that really stuck out is, you know, sometimes you're just like hanging out and mortar or rocket fire starts raining down and you've got a shelter in place. And you're like, what, what the hell are we actually doing here? It, you know, shouldn't we go out and like get the guys who are shooting rockets at us rather than just sort of, you know, go hide in a bunker every time they fire? That was one thing. The, the second thing that was really weird is I, I did, they had me do security for the Iraqi poll workers because you guys are probably too young to remember this, but 2005 was the big Iraqi parliamentary elections. And you, you remember like where people stuck their fingers in the ink and then raised their, their, yeah. their purple finger to show that they had voted. Um, we were doing security for those poll workers. And what was so weird about it is a lot of American leaders had convinced themselves that we were there for democracy. We were there to bring democracy to Iraq. And even the poll workers didn't give a shit about democracy, right? They just wanted to live in a safe place. Like they were, they were pissed at America, but they weren't pissed at America because we were, you know, more socially progressive than they were. You know, we gave rights to gay people. Like that's not why they were pissed at America. They were pissed at America because we were the strongest country in the world and we couldn't keep car bombs from blowing up in their markets. And they were just pissed off about it. And I kind of realized like all this high-minded bullshit you hear from American leaders about spreading democracy to the world. If we actually want to help the world, we should make it safer and have there be less killing. That is the best influence America can have in the world. And by the way, that is a huge difference between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Like Kamala Harris wants to send State Department dollars to people to do like trans pride parades overseas. Right. It's like my attitude is if you want to do a trans pride parade. That's your business. But why do American tax dollars have to fund this stuff? Donald Trump's attitude is I want to use American power to try to bring peace to the world. That sounds a hell of a lot smarter to me. Yeah, the foreign policy stuff like. I, I just feel like Trump does such a good job with that, with like really dealing good. with all the world leaders. And yeah. right when Biden came into office, obviously the Ukraine Russia stuff started. Yeah. Iran's getting out of control. Right. The Israel stuff started, right? They attacked, you know, killed what, over a thousand people. It's like every hot spot in the world became a war zone, and Donald Trump had it under control. This is, by the way, like one thing that the liberals, like they're just wrong about it. This is not a statement of opinion, this is a statement of fact. I've sat in classified briefings and I'm not going to give anything away and you know, give state secrets away here. I'd want the police to knock down the door, but world leaders were terrified of Donald Trump, right? And there's something to be said for actually having a little bit of fear in people, right? It, it created deterrence. Of course. They were terrified that if they did something crazy, Trump would whack the shit out of them. And that kept a lot of bad people in line. That is a fact. And when liberals say that Donald Trump's foreign policy was erratic, well, if his foreign policy was erratic, why did we have so much fewer war all over the world? It doesn't make an ounce of sense. Yeah, I was at the RNC too. And uh, nice. one thing that was really tough to watch was when they brought all the Gold Star Man, it's families so on stage. And I didn't, I obviously knew what a shit show the Afghanistan pullout was, but just hearing it from those families yep. was like really heartbreaking to hear all that stuff. It's so heartbreaking. And, you know, these, these are really like the best of us. 
Well, I started in the Marine Corps. I, I heard a colonel give a eulogy for a Marine of his who was killed, and he, he, he put it in this way that I thought was, because he's like a tough guy, but he put it in this way that I thought was really, really beautiful. He said, the people who go and die for our country, they're not the kids who didn't have opportunities. They're the smartest, the best looking, the most patriotic. They're the very best of us. And losing 13 of those kids for nothing, just because of pure stupidity from our leadership is the most, it's, it's maybe the most ridiculous mistake of the Biden administration. And Kamala Harris ought to own it, but of course she doesn't. And just how he, he never mentioned their names. And during the ceremony, no. he's like looking at his watch. Like yeah. It's just, it's actually like hard to believe. It's really sick. It's really sick. And you realize like the guy, you know, Biden, people try to say he's a great guy. I don't know him super well. I do not think Biden is a great guy. I actually think Biden is a bad dude. And we're just seeing him sort of fall into, you know, mental disrepair. But he was never a good dude. He was always what you see. The kind of guy who lets people die and then doesn't mention their name and stares at his watch when you're try trying to memorialize these guys. That's just unfortunately who he is. Well, I think you got to get going to this rally, which yeah. I think we're going to come with you. But one, one more question. Who do you think that is going to be your the VP on the other side? <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Um, I, you know. There's a lot of a lot of rumor that's going to be this guy, Tim Waltz, who's the governor from Minnesota. I don't know anything about him. He seems really angry. Um, there's a lot of talk is going to be this guy, Josh Shapiro from Pennsylvania, who, you know, I, I've seen this couple clips of him talking. He talks like Barack Obama. It's like it's like if I did try to do a really bad impression of Barack Obama, that's what, that's what it would sound like is this guy, Josh Shapiro from really? Pennsylvania. Yeah. Go watch a clip of his okay. and, and tell me if you agree with me. And then there's there's a bunch of other names out there. My attitude is it doesn't really care as much as this is it doesn't really matter as much as this is a hit to my ego. People are going to vote primarily for Donald Trump or for Kamala Harris. Right. That's the way these things go. And I think my job over the next few months is to just drive home the message that Kamala Harris has been a bad vice president. She'd be a worse president. And that's that's the message I'm going to take to the American people. Awesome. Well, thank, you really so thank, you thank you so much. Thank you all. Good to meet you. We're going to be we're going to be using our platform to tell everyone to get out there and vote for sure. That's that. one yeah, thing because yeah. we know there's a lot of enthusiasm, but everybody's got to go vote. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you guys. Get out there. Vote, so vote for Donald Trump. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you.